Hey you guys! So today's video is going to be a mashup of a few things. One, we are creating this makeup look. Two, we are trying out lots of new product. Three, I guess it's only two things. <laughs> Not much to say, I talk a lot in the video so I'm just gonna get right to it. One of you guys tell me all the time you miss when I do this so I'm gonna do it just for you. I'm gonna have a naked face in three, two, one! I will link everything that I use down below. First thing I need to do is put on some moisturizer. You could do any type of priming situation here that you prefer. I just, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really mess with primers the way I think other people do. What I do like to do is take a really beautiful moisturizer that wells, wears well under makeup. And for me, that's the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. Also, I have realized through editing recently that there's a really bad echo in here. I have a microphone. It doesn't even sound like it when I'm laying back my footage and trying to edit it all together. So I'm really sorry if the audio quality isn't the best. I am moving out of this room in the next couple weeks and back to where I normally film. So bear with me. Lately, I have been setting my brows before and after I do them with powder. I do this because I put on a lot of hydrating skincare even before I turned the camera on. I had put a toner, a serum, a I did eye patches, I did an eye cream, and then I just put moisturizer on. So my skin is really hydrated and wet even. So if my eye area where I go to do my eyebrows and I have to do a lot of work on them because I don't have any is wet, it just slides everywhere like as I'm trying to draw them on. So that's just a new little tip I've been doing. This brow technique is heavily influenced, inspired by, and ripped off from Nikki LaRousse. And I bought a lot of stuff that she recommended. I've been trying this technique and it's my new favorite brow technique of life. I have two of the Patrick Ta major brow pencils right here. I'm gonna use the color dark brown. And all I'm gonna do, brush them up first. I like to draw this underside in. I feel like no matter how I do my brows, if I use, you know, pomade, if I use shadow, I can't not do this step. I feel like some people can go in and just off the rip draw in hairs, but if I don't have like a home base to work with, it just looks like trash. I'm so not used to filming like this. I don't think I've done my makeup on camera in like well over a year. So we have that in. Now we're gonna take the same pencil and this is where I will kind of start to draw the brows in. And when I get to this back side, I start drawing them down. So the front kind of goes this way and this side goes down. It's because your hairs also grow down. In fact, my hairs, like on my brows, I actually have brow hair. The problem is it all goes straight down. I can't get them to look alive. It's like the hair on my head. So I go down like so. And you kind of got to turn your head around to make sure. that you're connecting. I have to be conservative with this part. Like I used to draw the brow on really bushy. I'm gonna flick my brow hair up in a second. If I start the brow base way too big, it just looks like my brows take up my whole forehead. So I have to be kind of chill. Next, I'm gonna take the Kosas Air Brow. This is new to me. I'll, actually, pretty much all this stuff is new to me. I love this stuff. I've tried several of those fiber building brow powders that they sell. Like I, I used to love the Benefit. I used to love the Charlotte Tilbury one. This is the best one I've ever used. No matter what your brow status is, it's gonna give you some life. It's gonna give you, give you some. So what I do is I always kind of brush them down first because I want the fibers to fully encapsulate each hair, if you will. Excuse me, speaking of hair, get out of here. And then I go up. You know what I mean? Give me a little something. I think this is a lighter brown. I probably could have gone darker and maybe I'll pick up a darker one. But sometimes I feel like when you use a lighter brow gel on darker brows, it almost makes them pop a little more, makes them look more real. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> this is my problem, child. This brow just, no matter what, I can't do anything. I talk to it nice. It just won't comply. I was watching that tutorial that Makeup by Ariel did with Patrick Starr last night, and it's like an hour long tutorial, which I guess was condensed down from hours and hours of glam. And I guess Ariel spent like 45 minutes doing Patrick's eyebrows, which like, hey, more power to you. But at first I was like, how could you possibly even need that kind of time? And then I get it. Especially because if you, if you do it first, it's like the first thing on your face, you can get really caught up, like trying to make it perfect. This is the Got To Be Brow Gel. They sell this 
you know, in a tube, people use it for their hair, but now they sell it in a brow gel formula. And it's no joke. Your stuff ain't going no way. The only thing with these brow pencils by Patrick Taws, I'm like, I can't see what they say. Okay, this is the dark brown one, cool. This is the Anastasia brow pen. I like this, but the color selection is not great. I've actually purchased three of these. They're, this is the closest I can get to what I'm looking for. This is the color medium brown, but what you wanna do with these is you kinda wanna give them a little bit of a second on the back of your hand before you go straight in. I don't know if the tip is too big or if it's too flimsy, but it's not the easiest to use. My favorite one of these used to be the Urban Decay Brow Blade, but they had it was double-ended, so one side was the actual pen and one side was the pencil and I would always run out of the pencil first. I just wanted the pen. I'm gonna use this to draw in some hairs. I'm gonna start in the back and come forward because if I start up front, it ends up looking way too much. I inevitably will mess up. So just a little bit, nothing too crazy because <laughs> it's so easy to mess up, frankly. I can hear my baby out there whining. He's going, eh. he just like all the time will go, huh, huh. <sighs> like he's not crying, he's not upset. It's like he's just enjoying making that noise, but it mimics enough of like a crying sound that we're always like, do you need something? What's wrong? He also growls a lot. Did any of y'all's little boys do that? I don't remember my daughter doing that, but he'll be like, <laughs> he does it all the time. This is a MAC concealer palette. I've been watching a lot of makeup tutorials lately and tons of people do this step and I feel like such an OG with this. I've been doing it for years, but all you do is take a lighter concealer. Don't go crazy, you know, with it. On a brush, this is a MAC one that the number has completely rubbed off of. And I just lightly carve out the underside. It gives you a chance to clean up anything you're not happy with. I feel like it also, if you're gonna do a brow bone highlight, it gives you like a little bit of a place to put it. It'll really pop. And if you don't do a brow bone highlight, you kind of have one naturally built in. I'm just gonna take a synthetic kind of pointy brush. This was an old school one from Sigma just to blend it in. Next, I'm gonna take some concealer. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. It's the only one that I have that on the more matte side, as opposed to like really glowy and dewy. Like when you try to do this with a more dewy concealer, it just does not work. I'm just gonna take some more loose powder and set my eye lid with it. You don't have to do this step. Some people find it unnecessary, but for me personally, I don't like applying powders into cream. I feel like they just get really hard to blend out. They're not as smooth. Anytime I've ever tried to do this another way, just to try to either skip a step or whatever the case, it doesn't work. The only exception I feel is with actual eye primer, like if you used a paint pot, for MAC, I think that's not so bad, but even then, frankly. Issue with paint pots is if you try to powder them, they just get gunky and disgusting. It takes a month of Sundays just to get to this point in the Stagum video. <laughs> Makeup by Mario Master Max palette. I'm gonna be using mostly my new brushes. These are a combination of BK Beauty, either the Angie Hot and Flashy collab or the Nikki La Rose one. Also a couple of old school ones and these Makeup by Ariel Pro ones, which I have a lot of mixed feelings about. Apparently the way he designed these was because he likes to use really light pressure with his brushes. But for me, I'm not like that. I'd just be getting up in there and they are very uh, bendy, which sometimes does not serve my purpose, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with it so I can get a full perspective on how I feel about them. Underwater rainbow. My son has this little aquarium he plays with and it has this song. You know when you have little kids and you not only come up with your own little language with your family to talk about your kid, we also have this, all his songs, just all the time. Underwater rainbow. I'm gonna take some of the transition colors from the Mario palette, the master matte, and I'm just going to start working this into the crease. Purple, purple, purple. Underwater rainbow. Do you guys know that happy song by Imogene Heap? Have you guys seen that's like viral or it went viral at some point? This song that Imogene Heap, Imogene Heap. I don't know why that doesn't want to roll off my tongue. I guess her and like some scientists decided to come up with this song that would calm babies down if they heard it. It actually works. I thought it was such a load of trash when I saw that reel, but the first time I took my son in the car and he started losing it, I played it and it shuts him right up. He loves it. 
It's the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I can see him in there laughing. He's hanging out with his sister. I always take it in right here. I can't remember where I learned this trick, but it kind of starts your nose contour. It actually works better if you do your foundation first, but I feel like I can still kind of see it. Go in with kind of this warmer shade and start working this in the outer corner. I heard Nikki say she designed this brush to be stiffer as opposed to this one. Like I said, how it's kind of flimsy. This one's pretty stiff, which is nice, especially for people with hooded eyes because it gives you a lot of precision. When you have hooded eyes, you're always kind of creating a crease. But when you have a stiff brush like this is probably why the Makeup by Ariel ones kind of threw me. Stiffer brushes just make for a lot more control, which you need, because like I said, with a hooded eye, you're creating, you're outlining and mapping out your crease by yourself. You know, nature's not helping you. So I'm trying really hard to be mindful of keeping this up and out. My eyes are hooded and I feel like they're almond, so they're kind of pinched out here in the outer corner. And if I follow that kind of smaller shape in the outer corner, it really drags my eye down. So there's a lot of lifting in my preferred eyeshadow technique. So what I specifically love about, <laughs> I feel like I'm at the dentist, you know, when they're in your mouth and they try to talk to you. What I specifically love about the Makeup by Mario palette and the shadows is that they have warmth to them, but they're not that 2014, 2015, like orange in your face, Nancy Grace type of warmth. They have a very skin-like appearance to them, even on your eye. They have like a hint of new neutrality. They're a little neutral. I don't know, I love them. I'm gonna take this really tiny brush from the Angie Hot and Flashy BK Beauty Club. It's an A504. This is great. If you have hooded eyes, you will love this brush. I'm gonna take this kind of chocolatey color from the Ethereal palette. It's again, just a little bit on the warmer side, not crazy so. It will match the eyeliner. Eyeliner I'm gonna use later. And I'm just gonna keep this mostly on the very outer corner kind of going up and kind of wiggling it along my lower lashes. See how it's kind of going in at an angle right here? All the small things. I usually film in the other side of the house where I can't hear what's going on out here, but there's just, I can hear what everyone's doing. Just like my family's out there familying. Now I'm gonna take my Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette. I'm using this for a very specific reason, which is kind of why I bought it to begin with, is I wanna take the Velvet Pomade right here and use it almost like a cream shadow. I mean, it's not technically a cream shadow. It's a Velvet Pomade. The train of thought being, I've talked about this in other videos, specifically videos targeted towards people who have hooded eyes. If you have hooded eyes, one of the biggest struggles you will usually have is that your lid makeup will kind of transfer and go everywhere. The way that I like to avoid it is twofold. Number one, reprime your eye with a cream shadow. Now the problem is Makeup Forever used to have these aqua shadows that I loved and I use them for this all the time but they have long since expired and I have to find some sort of replacement. I'm thinking about the Danessa Myricks color fixes for that. Also, you can use a glitter glue if you're using something sparkly to keep it from transferring all over your lid, which we'll talk about in a minute. But to brighten up my lid even more, I'm gonna take the color Sandstone from the Velvet Pomade side. This is the Angie Hot and Flashy A505 brush. You can just tell the difference, like how much it brightened this area up. And like slightly cut the crease, but not really. I just want to create a little definition and then I'll go back in and kind of blend. You may or may not need to do this. I have to do it because the way my eyes are, when I curl my lashes, you're going to be able to see my tight line or my upper waterline, whatever. And if I don't fill it in, it just looks like a bunch of gaps. It's not clean, it's not cute. So I can't decide, since I'm going to use a brown liner, 
You know what, I'll use black. This is the Christian Audette Panther eyeliner. I think this is the only one they have in terms of colors. It's the most jet black opaque black eyeliner you've ever seen. Has a little bit of playtime. It's super good for smudging things out. It does not move. It's actually one of those eyeliners you're gonna have to take a couple passes with your little eye makeup remover to get it off at the end of the day. Christian Audette, please come out with more colors. Do some brown, some navies, some plums. Like I would love it. This is such a great formula. <gasps> So me and my husband are going to the When We Were Young Festival in Vegas in October. I cannot, you guys, I'm so excited. I was such an emo scene kid when I was young. Not that young, I was like in my early 20s. I am so excited to see all these bands and like right now he's playing some sort of emo playlist while he's making breakfast. I'm just like, I'm getting my life right now. Anyway, okay, tight lining done. For actual eyeliner, I'm gonna use the Stila liquid liner in dark brown. I want a brown eyeliner kick. Like I need to get some really good gel liners. I need more coals. I need more liquids. Like all your favorite brown eyeliners, all different shades, light brown, red brown, dark brown, leave them down below. I wanna collect them all. I do this so weird. Do you see how I hold my pen when I do this? I'm mostly trying to fill in these gaps in my lashes. I'm not trying to do too much by way of trying to get it super thick. I say that and then I'm, I make it way too thick. <laughs> I have to do eyeliner. I would prefer not to do it very often, but if I don't do it, you can so distinctly and completely see my lashes, like the lash band, it's, it's not cute. I debated putting this in the video, but I did it when I did my makeup yesterday and I really liked it. And I debated putting it in because I cannot find this anywhere. This is my daughter's. It is, a, it's called a VDL. The brand is VDL. It's called an eye shine. This is the most beautiful glitter eyeshadow I've ever seen in my life. I was hoping, and let's try it and see if it'll work. We'll start with this and see how it goes. I was hoping I might be able to get this color from the Natasha Denona. I need a new palette to do the same thing, but I doubt it because this is so gorgeous and I can't say I've ever tried anything even remotely similar. So I'm gonna give it a fighting chance with a little bit of Max Fix Plush. Little Flex Plush, eh? Put it on the brush, see? Ooh. Okay. So it kind of did it. It did turn it pink though. You'll see what I mean in a second because I'm still gonna put the other eyeshadow on top of it. It is really pretty though. Okay, just for shits and gigs, we're gonna try this one. I did it with my finger the other day, but it's one of those things that it's like, Eh. Watch this. Is that not like so pretty? This like super fine, just, oh, it's so pretty. It's really finely milled and in person, it just really glimmers. I love it. I was like, can I have this? When I found it in her bathroom and she's like, no, my favorite thing in the world. Understandably so. The baby has good taste. She's not a baby at all. I don't know why I said that. She's freaking 18. Y'all, I have an 18 year old. It's not okay. I'm not doing all right. Hence the reason I need to go to the When We Were Young Festival. I need to feel youthful again. <laughs> Only problem is I can't find this anywhere. Like I said, if you guys know where to find it and I've tried, it's the VDL Eye Shine in Sparkling Veil. So pretty in person, I'm trying to tell you. So I'm actually gonna turn the camera off to do my lashes and all that good stuff. The only new thing I have by way of that is the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. I am typically not a high-end mascara girly. It's not normally my jam, but I do really like this. I think I've been hooked on it. So this is the mascara I'm gonna use and for lashes I'm using the Eyelore Luxe Marquee Silk something or another. I've been using them for years. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna take this Makeup by Ariel A19 brush and the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Color Corrector. I have not used a new color corrector in the longest time. I think I was stuck on the Charlotte Tilbury for the longest and to be clear, I used to not be a big fan of Huda Beauty and there's still some aspects of her line I don't love, but I'm not gonna lie y'all. Sometimes I forget how good her under eye products are. Her concealers, her setting powders, like they are so good and I have recently picked some of them back up. So anyway, this is Cherry Blossom. It is dope. Like I told you guys in one of my last videos, I am tired. Although my son just started like as of not even quite a week. It's so new, I'm even scared to speak on it. But as of not even quite a week ago, he started sleeping through the night. 
I can't believe it. I'm about to get part of my life back. I can't wait. Anyway, this concealer or this color corrector works so friggin' well. It'll make no sense. Okay, I'm gonna use it to clean up the outside. Do you see that? Like, and for me, you know, I know there's this huge trend right now with changing your under eye color. So some people are doing like the peach or the pink. They'll do more neutral, they'll do yellow. I don't know, it, maybe it's the old fashioned way, but the way I've always done it, either on myself or on clients, was to match the under eye color correctors and brightening powders with that of your undertone. And my undertone is neutral to cool. I'd say 73% neutral and what, 37%? I don't know, I'm not good at math. <laughs> Mostly neutral, a touch of cool. There's a lot of redness in my skin as you can see. Like when I break out, I get little pink scars instead of brown ones. So I always just go for more pink tones in general under the eye. So with a color corrector, I don't know man, this works so much better than any orange or salmon I've ever tried before. This is amazing. I'm gonna let that hang out for a second and lightly even set it with some powder. I'm gonna take the Givenchy Prisim Libre powder with the Nikki La Rose. This is her detail powder brush in N14. I love the way it smells. I'm gonna lightly set this. And the only reason I'm even gonna do that is because when you have a color corrector and then you smear concealer on top of it, you just start to blend everything together, which is fine. It can hinder the efficacy of your color corrector. It just isn't as opaque and powerful as it once was, if you will. But you don't wanna use a lot, just like a smidgen. Also, as far as these brushes are concerned, these Nikki La Rose brushes, I love her collection. I feel like she did such a good job with these, I almost wanna say obscure, random brushes, but yeah, they're so, they're so specific and, that, and yet not. Like specific in that they're very detail oriented, but they are not specific in that the uses for them are plentiful. You could do so much. Like this could be a contour, could be a powder. If your eyes are big enough, it could blend out eyeshadow. You could use this to set your under eyes. <laughs> you could use it to do precision setting. And there's just a lot of things you could do with it. I love the way the Shivanshi powder smells. It's kind of wild. Les Beau Foundation. I'm gonna take Nikki La Rose N17 brush. I love this brush. It's double-sided. She said that she modeled this after a painter's brush, which I can definitely see. It's very close to that old school, like, I don't know if you guys, back in the day, I'm talking like 2010, 2011, everyone used this for foundation. It was like this paintbrush style brush. I have seen this before. MAC did something like this a really long time ago, probably like in 2014, 2015 maybe, maybe even 2013. I used to have it, I don't have it anymore because I found no use for it and I didn't like it. So this is, even though, you know, like I said, I have seen something similar, this is such an improvement on that concept in every way. It's an improvement on this. It's, in my opinion, you know, I do have other foundation brushes that I'm testing out right now. I've been testing this one from Morphe, their Pro line, which I also love. Still, this is the one I keep picking up. There's something about it. For foundation, I'm gonna take the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I have the colors 5.9 and 2. I mix my colors together. I think this is a bad habit I picked up from being a makeup artist because it's an expensive way to buy new foundation because I always have to buy two of them. Not to mention, I and back sunless tanning so I change colors a lot <laughs> during the span of a week and sometimes I don't want to tan and then I'm just really pale so there's something about having options no matter what color I am that I prefer and what I like about this brush again like I said the flat flatness or whatever it makes pressing like you know if you get really red around the corners of your nose like I do like pressing the foundation in really easy. You can press, you can buff. It really just depends on what you prefer to do, but it's just oh, it's so nice. Notice I'm not going over my eyes at all because I already have the corrector there. I don't need to pile any more product. We're still gotta do concealer. We still gotta do under eye powder. So little layers of 
product. Don't go too crazy. I told you guys in my recent video where I was hauling everything I bought that my skin has changed so much. Like it's nuts how much it's changed. I think it's a combination of many, many factors. I think some of it was nature and some of it was nurture, but all the nurture things I did, I'm gonna make a video about today like skincare things I've been loving. The crazy thing about my skin changing the way that it has is still a lot more dry. I've never had dry skin like this, but dry. I mean, it's not like flaky, but I can put foundation on it and it just sets immediately and I don't have to powder it anymore if I don't want to. I do find, however, cause I was kind of going through this phase once my skin changed where I was like, I'm not gonna wear a powder anymore. But I don't know, powder smooths everything out. Even if you have dry skin and you or drier, normal dry skin, you need to find a way to make it work because that is what actually makes you look like poreless and smooth and airbrushed and all those things. It's powder, man. I think the trick is finding the right formula and the right technique. This is the She Glam Contour in Tawny Amber. I have another one of these contour colors and I also have a couple of the blushes. I don't think I like the blushes quite as much as I like the contour. Maybe it's the colors I ended up with. These are really nice. This kind of spinny, twisty, spongy applicator vibe. The formula reminds me of if you've ever had a cushion foundation, like L'Oreal used to make a Lumi foundation in a cushion that was so good. I don't know why they discontinued it. Or even like the Dior Air Flash. The reason it comes out of that aerosol can is because the formula is so thin and like it's thin, but um, pigmented, but glowy and easy to blend. It's just, that's kind of what this is. It reminds me a lot of those cushion foundations, but in a contour form. So to contour, I'm gonna take the, mm, what should I use? I'm gonna take the Morphe Pro brush in M10. Y'all, I seriously need to get like a monocle for this stuff. 105, 145, I don't know, I can't read it. And you can go straight in with this. I think you're gonna kind of risk it a little bit if you do, but we'll do it today for the sake of argument. Like the color of this is just so perfect. I even, you know, bought some more expensive options. I still like them, you know, when I did this haul, but this thing's like $7 and it might be, could be the best contour shade I've ever used. It's just perfect. It's really natural. That kind of thin formula makes it just so easy to blend and it's not, I want to say chunky. It doesn't seem like a good way to describe a cream product, but sometimes, or it's even a liquid, I would argue. It's more like a liquid. Sometimes creams or liquids, like once you start to build them on top of things, they take on this chunky cakey appearance and this just doesn't. These Morphe Pro brushes, I have a few of them. They're really exceptional. And I kind of swore Morphe off. I, I thought I was done, never to return again, but these are actually really, really nice. I don't feel like the line is quite as long as I wish it was. There was only, I think one or two more of these that I wanted to pick up, but if they continue to expand it, I will continue to try them. I just think they're so well thought out, so well designed, just incredible. So for concealer, I'm gonna do the Makeup by Mario in the colors 240 and 120. I'm gonna mix them together on the back of my hand. This concealer is beautiful, just stunning. This brush, okay, this is the Hot and Flashy by BK Beauty and Angie Collab. This is A506. This is called a, a kitty, a kitten paw brush. Reminds me of like this alter ego I used to have with my friends where uh, her name was Kitty Soft Paw. Kitty Soft Paw, pleased to meet you. Yeah. This brush is incredible for concealer and I wasn't always a brush with concealer person. Again, it was usually a damp beauty blender, but it just sometimes did not help the cause of what I was trying to do at the time. I'm just kind of taking it down the side of the nose and it makes getting up here, like in the corner of your eye, really easy. Like I don't really have that much concealer on this brush. Like this is all that's I don't know if you can see, there's still a lot left on my hand. This concealer is just so pigmented, and I know that's a word that I tend to get sick of hearing after a while when it comes to makeup reviews, but it is. It's so high coverage and so blendable and so, I don't know, flawless under eyes in a tube. I'm gonna take this cream bronzer from Mod Beauty. It's like a, they call it like a clay bronzer. Oh my God. 
Am I the only one? Do you guys ever go to do your makeup? And then by the time you're at this stage, like you've done your foundation and your concealer, suddenly your nose is just itching. Like you cannot, it's like tickly itching. And you can't scratch it because you're gonna mess everything up. Ah. This is a Makeup by Ariel brush. I'm just gonna kind of warm my complexion up because I think I went too light on something. <laughs> Maybe my foundation, I didn't, I went too light. Blush layer one, I'm gonna take the Patrick Ta She's That Girl blush, and I'm gonna use the Angie Hot and Flashy BK Beauty A507. This, if you like cream blush, you need this brush. It is the best for cream blush. It just deposits it perfectly. It's like, and then it's on. It blends itself, just incredible. I would always take my blush just like a few other places around my face, I feel like it, helps to achieve a little bit more seamlessness. I'm gonna go back in with my concealer brush and just take the excess on the brush. Just kind of make sure I'm not going too low. I'm gonna take this brush from Nikki La Rose and BK Beauty, it's the N16. It's such an interesting little brush, but it has like these little fibers that stick up just a little bit. I don't know if you can see it right there i always forget i have autofocus on this camera <laughs> you can kind of see them sticking up and i'm just going to use that to make sure i don't have any creases everything creases it's it's if there's texture you know makeup will not smooth it over it's not cement <laughs> so you're gonna always have that but what you can do is make sure you don't set your creases so before you do under eye powder, just make sure that, you know. All right, I'm gonna take again the Givenchy Prisim Libre Poudre. <laughs> I am going to bake a little bit today. Like I said before, ever since I stopped having oily skin issues, I did go through a phase where I decided not to use a lot of powder and it looked okay like at first and definitely in certain lighting it looked really glowy and dewy but it also kind of looked like a hot mess <laughs> i think that's the fine like the balance you walk where depends on what your vibe is again i was watching that makeup by ariel tutorial with patrick star i really like how this powder smells i'm gonna take the huda beauty easy bake powder in cherry blossom <laughs> a little on the top and I am gonna do like a baking adjacent motion here I'm gonna apply it like I'm baking but I'm literally gonna wipe it right off what I want from this is not so much brightening because my under eyes are already very bright but I want the smooth the smoothness that it's gonna give me like it's been on for a second and I'm just gonna take it right back off Oh, I was making a point earlier about that Ariel Patrick Star video. Anyway, they were talking about, or Ariel in specific was talking about how he's super conservative with highlighter because he thinks the matte look is so much cleaner, and it is. Like the minute you start adding a bunch of shimmer and glowy stuff, it does look really pretty and, and vibrant and youthful, but there's no sh it loses structure. And especially once you start layering highlighters on top of, top of powders and everything just all these different finishes on, on top of each other. It just kind of takes away from, from the look in my opinion. But that's just my opinion, do not come for me. This is always how my hand looks when I'm doing makeup. Like I'm such a, I must touch the back of my hand with my brush before I touch my face with it, person. I'll try to warm my face up a little bit. This is the Makeup by Mario Bronzer in Light Medium. Reminds me of the Bobbi Brown bronzers for some reason, I'm not 100% sure why. I feel like I must have a dry patch right here that stuff is wanting to cling to lately. You guys, next week, I'm getting a CO2 laser done, which just basically means they're gonna completely fry all my skin off my face and I'm gonna start with fresh, brand new baby skin and I'm really looking forward to it because like, yay, I don't break out anymore, but like, boo, now I have dry patches. <laughs> Super annoying, can't win for losing. I'm gonna take a little bit of the powder blush that's in this Patrick Ta palette, is that what we're calling it? On one of these Morphe Precision brushes. I think this is meant to be a powder brush, I don't know. I'm just gonna kinda give a little bit. And there's a bristle. Perhaps that is why I feel itchy because bristles are flying all over the place. These blushes are intense. Like you have to be very 
careful with them. And that's the cream and the powder formula in the palette. Either one, it'll get you. My last powder step, and then I'm gonna put some um, setting spray on, kind of refresh, do lower lash line, lips, and then we're finally done. But I've been doing this step forever. This is an Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Palette, and I'm just gonna mix these two together. Like, I load the brush up a lot, and then I'm just gonna buff. The point of this is to just kind of blend everything. Make sure you're bronzers, blending in with your contours, blending in with your concealer. The powder that you're putting on it, these finishing powders, they are blending into the existing powder, but they're also imparting like a nice soft finish kind of glow. It's really hard to see in camera. It's more something you'll notice in person. I'm gonna go in with the warm brown shade we kind of did the outer crease with and just kind of work it back and forth. This is the N12 brush from Nikki La Rose, and it's really good. If you guys like doing your lower lash line, just smudge it out because A, it's wicked soft, but the way the bristles are, they just make blending this out so easy. When I set out to redo my makeup collection, I didn't think I was going to bring brushes into that, but I'm really glad that I did because I mean, I don't feel like I had a bad brush collection before, but the theme of my perspective around makeup right now is is now and continues to be everything's gotten so much better it's just insane it don't make no sense that's what i always tell my baby you're so cute it don't make no sense he is so cute you guys i want to bring him in here so y'all can see him but i think the the lights would just blind him my husband and my daughter both sat in this chair when I was trying to test the setup and they both were like, <laughs> like it was way too bright for them. And I'm so used to it. It doesn't even bother me anymore. I love this eye look, it's so pretty. I'm gonna take a dark brown shadow from the Mario palette. And this is like the teensy weensest smallest, come on now, come on now. Teensy weensest smallest little detail brush you've ever seen in your life. And I'm just gonna kind of Bring this all around this area. When I was watching that Patrick Star and Makeup by Ariel video, Patrick made it a point to comment on Ariel doing the lower lash line. He was like, you take just as long or, or do as much on the lower lash line as you do the upper lash line. And I was thinking like, well, yeah. <laughs> if you do the lower lash line, like when I used to go real hamburgers with it, you know, 2018, 2019. I still do, I still love a nice lash line, but, or lower lash line. Cause my eyes, I feel like it opens them up a lot. It's a huge difference when I have it versus when I don't. But you have to, you gotta, you gotta finesse it. And you should always, if you can, I wanna try to look in the camera and the mirror while I do this. If you have hooded eyes, focus on connecting this lower lash line to this outer corner. It's really gonna accentuate your makeup and make it look very, I almost wanna say custom, but that's not the word I'm looking for. Maybe I will say custom, cause I feel like a lot of people, and I used to see this when I was a makeup artist, I would see people who would do, I call it like stamp makeup. It was like the same, and not even like the same look, cause a lot of different basic looks look great on all types of people. It was the shapes they would create. The brows, the eyes, everything would be the same shape on everyone, like a stamp, and it didn't flatter the people. So I feel like when you have hooded eyes, if you make sure to bring this up into your outer corner right here, it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you a nice shape. I'm gonna take this Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in 300, just like a nude color. This is the Anastasia Glow Seeker Highlighter. I love this. Like, oh, it is, first of all, the packaging is so beautiful. It feels really luxe, like it's meant to be treasured and cherished for a long time. But the color itself is also very, very beautiful. It reminds me a lot of the Omrezi highlighter they did a few years ago. It's very, very similar, but it's gorgeous. They even are launching one for Lunar New Year with red packaging called Pearl. I have to get it. Red is like my favorite color, red and green. <laughs> Any kind of red makeup packaging I really am into, like the Valentino packaging is so nice. I just haven't picked any of it up. Anyway, I'm gonna take this. This is a Smith 253 brush. I just always use this to highlight my nose, which is crooked. Like I, I knew it, doing it in here is so hard. I can do it off camera and it's no big deal, but something about these lights, I don't know if it's the looking in the monitor, it's, it's crooked, but whatever. I'm gonna go back in with this powder brush I've been using from Nikki La Rose, the N14, and I'm gonna strategically apply highlighter. I don't like to go too nuts with it anymore. 
I mean, I was never one of those like chrome girlies, you know what I'm talking about? They'd be like slathering it on. Gonna use the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara. I always have this. In terms of makeup products I've been buying for years and will buy forever and ever, this is top of the list, frankly. That and MAC Fix Plus. This is the Makeup by Mario Lip Liner in the color Toasty. We're nearing the home stretch. Easy to work with, and they all have, like, call me crazy, tell me what you guys think. They all have, like, a cool, almost gray, maybe taupe undertone to them. I don't know, I, I, I can't explain it. I have two of them, and I feel like they both have that. This is Bronx Baby by Makeup by Mario. All right guys, this is the finished look. I hope it's translating on camera the way that I would like for it to. I do know that in person, it's a lot. I look like I have on like 10 pounds of makeup and I love makeup. So for me to say that I look like I'm wearing a lot, it's, it's a lot. It's such a difference, honestly. I haven't filmed in studio, I can't even remember. It's been a couple years and just the difference between what makeup looks like when I just do it at my vanity versus what I do it like here is insane. I think no matter what your lighting situation, the color combinations I used are fine. It's just the amount that I have on <laughs> is a lot. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know if there's any particular looks you want me to recreate, if there's any like celebrities or something like that, if there's any more products you want more information on. I have tons of new makeup to try out and bring on camera. so. There'll be a few more of these videos coming in the near future, but hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>